This is Mike Bot. Today's video is going to be an unboxing and a small demo on the Revel Point Miracle Pro. So this 3D scanner is Revel Point's flagship 3D scanner. It's basically all their 3D scanners into one gigantic unit. This thing is a beast. It's expensive, but it's an all-in-one scanner. It does everything from tiny to large. So you don't need three or four independent scanners. It's just an all-in-one unit. So the Pro version basically has 32 gigs of memory and a couple extra accessories. That's the only difference between the Pro and the standard. This thing is about $2,400 Canadian, but if you get it on sale, you can get it for a little bit cheaper than that. When you take into consideration all the other individual scanners, their price exceeds five grand. So if you're looking for an all-in-one scanner that does tiny to large, this is the way to go for consumer grade scanners that aren't in the 10,000 plus range. This has a built-in 500 milliamp hour battery. It has an OLED touch screen. It has Wi-Fi 6 built in. And it has a 48 megapixel RGB camera. It also has six LED lights built in for flash. It does color scanning, obviously. And it does, I think, up to 0.02 millimeter accuracy, which is pretty incredible. The range point for this is from 100 to 1000 millimeters. So the Mini 2 goes down to 120, but the Mini 2 has a blue light, which gives you more accurate detail. So this one is pretty close to the Mini 2, but the Mini 2 just has a slight edge over this one with detail. But otherwise, this thing is an incredible beast of a machine. It comes with a 65 watt charger. So this thing charges very, very quick. So in my video, you're going to see it goes from, I think it was 80% to 100% in about 10 minutes, which is pretty fast. The battery only gives you about two hours of battery time. But keep in mind, this thing is running Windows and it has an OLED screen, Wi-Fi, all the scanners. It's It, it has a lot of energy consuming uh, hardware and it's heavy intense hardware and then obviously it has the graphics card the CPU all the process everything this has the Revo scan app built into it and it has over the air updates via Wi-Fi so therefore you're always going to have the latest and greatest firmware as long as Revo point continues to support it and not drop a new scanner every month so to transfer files off of this thing or your screen recordings because it does screen recordings as well you can do it through um, linking your Windows PC to it through Wi-Fi. Haven't had that work for me successfully yet. Or just plugging in the USB-C. So this thing is USB-C all the way. It's USB-C into the uh, scanner, USB-C output. That's why the charger comes with two USB-C uh, plugins for it. So for your laptop, you're going to need an adapter if you don't have an adapter or USB-C. It also comes with an HDMI output. So the nice thing about that HDMI uh, cable, you can plug it into your TV or laptop and use that screen instead of the LED screen that's built into the scanner itself. Now that I can see a lot of uses for, especially if you're scanning really large objects and you need somebody to kind of keep an eye on things. M many use cases you're going to see in future videos. I'm going to be showcasing all this stuff. So keep an eye out for new videos coming out. So I said you can go tiny with this thing. So the smallest you can go is 10 by 10 by 10 millimeter. And the largest is 4,500 by 4,500 by 4,500 millimeter. And that's without having to swap scanners. It's all just built into this one little gigantic expensive unit. With the near mode, it captures fine details. And then, uh, cause there's only two modes you can flip between near and far. So near mode does the small stuff and then far mode does the medium to big stuff. It's fairly lightweight. It's about 750 grams for the entire scanner. And as I mentioned, you can probably charge the thing from zero to 80 in about 30 minutes, which is pretty good. So the LED screen on here, as I mentioned, is ammo LED. Uh, it's a 2K resolution screen. It's only six inch, but it, it's the same size as your phone, essentially. So if you ever used your phone to scan, this is similar to that. And it has a touch screen, which has many different inputs that I'll talk about shortly. 
Now, as far as the hardware, I mentioned they're very powerful. So it's an eight core, 2.4 gigahertz processor, 32 gigs of memory for the pro version, 16 gigs of memory for the standard, which um, basically if you go with the pro version, it allows you to capture up to 20,000 frames in one scan versus I think it's 10,000 with the 32 gigs of memory, uh, with the 16 gigs of memory. Both of them have 256 gigabyte hard drive built in. So just keep a close eye on that because it will fill up quickly. Just like all the other scanners, it has two capture modes. It has single shot mode and continuous. Single shot mode doesn't work very well with any of the scanners I found. So focus on using the continuous scanning mode. This one is supposedly high speed as well. It does 15 frames per second. But as you saw with the Inspire, it does 18 frames per second. So I guess that's fast when you kind of think about it, especially considering it's a scanner. Now, as you can see in my unboxing, this thing comes with every single thing you can imagine. It comes with all the calibration boards, the mats, a cheap little turntable, uh, various other accessories. Like they well, it's well, 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 well equipped. It comes with all the accessories that the other scanners come with just all into this one unit. The only thing you're missing in this case would be the dual access turntable, which is a must in my opinion, but you don't need the hand stabilizer attachment or the LEDs because it has six flash LED built into it. So I, I did purchase the LED separately for my other scanners, which was only 30 bucks and a dual access turntable was 150. So other than that, just the dual access turntable in my opinion is all you're gonna need. This scanner is supposed to have like stabilization built into it anyway. So with that said, the IMU is a nine axis scanning interface. It does 8K of color capture with the 48 megapixel camera. So it's kind of, um, they thought ahead in this case. Now, are you ever going to scan 8K resolution? I don't know. Some people might. I, I don't have a use case for it. To me, all I care about is the 0.02 millimeter precision and the 0.05 millimeter accuracy. That's what I care about personally. So another nice thing with the screen is that it's extremely sensitive and you can flip it. And that's a big plus. You can flip it up to 180 degrees. So it, it it's not a full turn, but it, it still gives you flexibility, which is nice. They thought of almost everything with this thing. So on the touch screen, I mentioned that there are various um, gestures that you're going to need to learn how to use. Now you're going to see in my demo, uh, in this video i did two or three demos but i don't explain everything but i did do a screen recording with a demo so you'll kind of see how the the quick little process works there will be a full in-depth review and full in-depth demo coming soon and i'm going to compare it to the mini 2 revo point scanner so in the settings tab on the scanner itself you're very limited to what you can do so you have your storage the wi-fi the screen rotation, the screenshot, the screen recording, the power off button, and then the volume and the brightness. With the touch screen, you basically have four ways to use it. So there is one finger swipe mode, then you have pinch to zoom, two finger drag, and one finger drag. So the reason I'm mentioning those, you're gonna need those when you're doing the editing. If you're used to using a mouse, then it's going to be a bit of a learning curve, but I find it's more accurate using your finger anyway, uh, to some degree. For those of you that are scanning with your phones, you probably already know how to edit with your phones. So when you are scanning in near mode, you need to be about 18 centimeters away. And you're going to see in the demo, I'm kind of struggling with that at first because I didn't know that when I was doing it. Uh, I did get one or two good captures and then a bunch of bad ones. I, I uploaded the most relevant videos uh, in, the, in the small demo that I'm doing. So just like with the Revo 5 scan app that you have on Windows, this is identical to it, just built into this unit. So you have your auto exposure, it tells you when it's underexposed, overexposed. Uh, every setting you have in Revo scan is built into this thing. So with the uh, Revo scan as well, you can edit your model directly on this. So Let's say you're doing a scan somewhere and you want to edit everything on the spot, then transfer it to the customer right then and there. You can do it all from this without carrying your laptop with you. It's a fully portable device, all in one powerhouse of a unit. It takes away the need for a laptop, a cell phone and uh, a desktop. Now, with the exception that you're going to need those to transfer the files afterwards. 
Once you transfer the files are going to be your typical PLY scanner files that you need to convert into an OBJ or an SDL or a 3MF so you can print it, assuming you're going to print it and not put it into CAD software to edit. So the Revo scan software has the one tap edit. I don't know what previous software was like, but I know this was probably one of the biggest requested things for these scanners and they included that built into this machine as well, which is really nice. So the beauty of that is it takes away a lot of the guesswork and a lot of the issues that you have if you were to do everything manually. The software update is under settings. And uh, as you can see in my video, you only have one update to apply, but I'm sure they're going to have more down the road. So try to keep up with those. There's also an auto shutdown button. I think uh, for after 10 minutes, it auto shuts down the entire device to save battery power. But get into the habit of shutting it down when you're not using it to preserve the battery because it drains the battery really, really quick. So some tips when you're scanning, um, when you're using marker mode, you're going to need to mark up your object very, very well. You want to mark up where all the detailed stuff on the object. If you use the uh, markers with, that's just built in onto the turntable, it's going to cause issues, I find. So if you're using marker mode, actually mark up your model with the markers. That's probably the best tip I can give you. Otherwise, it's a lot of trial and error and you need to kind of figure out what you're doing uh, as you go. There, There's no set way of 3D scanning. It's kind of learn as you go kind of thing. And that's basically it. So I've explained everything at a very, very high level, gone over the settings, gone over the specs of the device, and I've included some demos for you. So I did uh, three demos here. I did one of a shiny reflective object that I've been having a hell of a time scanning. I did one of the bus that came uh, in the package, as you can see, uh, as you saw in the unboxing, it's tons and tons of stuff are included. And then I did one of uh, the front bumper of my car. I tried to do one of my fan in the house, but it's black. And as we know with 3D scanning, it doesn't like dark objects, reflective objects, or transparent objects. But uh, I'm surprised I was able to scan my car because the other scanners weren't able to work outdoors at all. And by the other scanners, I mean the Inspire, the Pop 2, and the Mini 2. I couldn't get anything outdoor. So the fact that this works is incredible and it looks pretty decent as you're going to see in my demo here. The bust came out perfect, obviously, because they pre-made the bust so it scans perfectly. And then my device I struggled with. Uh, the first time came out kind of okay. The next three, four times were a disaster and off camera. It came out okay again. So the customer won't let me apply paint to it, unfortunately. So I'm going to have to try to figure out how to get that scan working with this reflective object. There are a few things you want to print for this scanner. Um, there's a lens cover you can print. There are feet to have it stand that you can print. There's a, a little uh, device that makes every, uh, what do you call it there? Like um, there's a scanning, a scanning box that you can print as well. Highly recommend you print that. And then there's even an adapter that allows you to uh, basically take the, the big plate they give you and put it on the small turntable. So those are the three must print things in my opinion. Lens cover, the legs, and the turntable adapter. The scanning box, I got it myself. I recommend you do as well, but it's not a must. And those are maybe the best attachments to get for this thing. Don't need to buy anything else other than the dual access turntable, which I think is very important. So anyway, that's it for today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you didn't like it, let me know why. And uh, make sure you check out my Patreon. I'm going to be putting on some really cool stuff. All the 3D scanning stuff will go on there before it goes on YouTube. And that's it for now. So again, make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. It's greatly appreciated. Thanks again for watching. Mike Bot out. Thank you for watching Mike Bot Entertain.